Good evening. I'd like to call the March 2nd, 2023 meeting to order. Uh, we do have some, we have Stan Anderson on Zoom by way of Arizona. We have uh, a medical uh, situation with one of our council members, so he needed to go to Sioux Falls. And we have uh, another council member that's out of town today that we are not able to connect with at this moment. So with that being said, um, Carolyn, would you please call roll? Welsh. Morgan. Here. Stan Anderson. Here. Houston. Here. Williams. Here. Hawk. Here. Mike Anderson. We do have a point. Okay. With that, we'd like to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Sheriff Bryan, would you like to lead it for us, please? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, do we have any order of business for emergencies? No. Okay. And we've identified that uh, Stan Anderson is attending on Zoom. Uh, item number six is to approve the agenda. And I would like to move item 12, which is our visitors today, uh, Sheriff Mueller and the emergency management to uh, right below number seven police report. So with that, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So move. A second? Second. Jerry has seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Hold. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, with that then, we'll move right ahead with the police report. Welcome. Well, fortunately for me, it was an uneventful month. <laughs> we had no major events and no arrests. Any questions? <laughs> yes, the report did look somewhat quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. I'll tell you <laughs> Okay. Mayor and Council, I really appreciate you letting us come out and hijack your meeting for a little bit here tonight. We won't take too long, but uh, I just felt it was very important after the events we had with the blizzard in December of 2022 to come out and talk just a little bit about the impact that your community had and the volunteers out here had on life safety that, that night. And, I was uh, in the command center. I want to just take just a moment to introduce you to uh, Chief Deputy Mark Hughes. He's been a he's a new Chief Deputy that I brought on with me, and uh, when I was sworn in in, in uh, January, and he'll be overseeing the law enforcement division now. But Mark and I, and Alexa with uh, Alexa White with uh, emergency management, she'll be talking here in a little bit, and several others were in the command center that that day when we were supposed to have this small squall blow through our area that nobody was really prepared for. And I can tell you that the panicky feeling we got when we realized that we had over 200 cars stranded east of October in Pennington County and uh, really weren't sure what we were going to do with them that evening. We were, this thing was supposed to last a half an hour, then an hour, turned into hours after an hour, after an hour. And I don't have to tell you because you lived through it out here. But I can tell you that uh, once we recognized that our small communities across eastern Pennington County had stood up emergency shelters and we had room for these people, we could really go to work concentrating on getting the stranded people off the interstate and getting them safely into the communities. And it was a super big deal for all of us. And I can tell you, I feel strongly without communities like Wall standing up the way you did in Wonderwood and Wasta that we were people would have died that night. 100% confident. We just didn't have enough places to put them. That storm lasted too long, and the conditions were, were too too poor to sustain all of those people out there. So you saved some lives. Um, I'm going to present some awards when we get done, but first I just want to let a couple of folks talk here today. 
I didn't realize we were going to have a full Pennington County Commission forum here today. I don't know if we're going to be breaking some rules. <laughs> but uh, uh, first, I'm going to let Alexa White come out and talk from an emergency management perspective, and then maybe some of the commissioners would like to talk. I just briefly want to say thank you to everybody who was part of the shelter operations. And and I think, uh, Mayor, you said it, you know, we just get it done. That's what you said when we had our after action call and we were talking about everything. You realized there was a need and you made it happen. Uh, the Red Cross has a trailer stage here because we know that this location is like the last frontier for a while when there's a snowstorm. And so that worked well. So even though there wasn't Red Cross personnel here to get that and open it up, you know, we worked with the fire department, we found that we got it open and you guys again just made it happen. And so we just want to thank you. I think you mentioned all of the conditions that made that extremely difficult, you know, and, and then we would have lost people. The temperatures were so cold that people couldn't have stayed in their cars. You know, sometimes you can stay in your car when it's cold. You could have gas and just keep running, but this wasn't one of those nights. So we just want to say thank you to everybody who was part of that operation. Thank you. Here we have uh, Commissioner Chair Lord Lloyd LaCroix and Commissioner Gary Drews and Commissioner Ron Rosconnect. And I don't know who wants to talk, but I know a couple of our commissioners and their family were stuck out here. They got to know you very well. I could appreciate it because when we left here, the folks get to Rapid City, when we got the wall, we weren't going any further. And I had a niece, uh, an ankle replacement in November, and I was on a knee scooter. And I thought, you know, if we get stuck out here, I can, it was somewhere between 10 and 15 below zero. You couldn't see where you're driving. When we got to the exit, we thought, we're out of here. Well, then we had Soundwise Park. And then, uh, is it Jim Kitterman? He came to the rescue. And then the gentleman that owns the Super 8 also came to the rescue. So I did spend, uh, as a backup, the best that we could have done is I'm also commissioner for Penning County Housing Redevelopment. And I called our director and he said, you know, we got a facility in a 28 unit facility in Raleigh. You can stay in the waiting room. There's a restroom. I thought that is so much better than staying in the car. But we got to stay at the suit break, but uh, they didn't have an elevator. So being in a new skier, uh, you know, we, we made it work. But I'll tell you what, uh, I can't appreciate I, I just, and I talked to Marty, the former mayor, and he said, you know what? He said, we're going to open up this, we're going to open up that. And you guys did that. And so, like Brian said, if it wouldn't have been for your hospitality, who knows uh, how the results could have been different. So, appreciate it. Well, I'm Gary Drews, and this wasn't my first experience of getting stuck in ball. <laughs> Back 25, 26 years ago, I was bringing my daughter and five of her friends and we were supposed to get to the Rapid City Airport so they could all fly to Washington, D.C. for a few days. And uh, we got caught in the snowstorm and we spent the night in the wall and fortunately was able to get into a motel room at that time. We did not anticipate on December 21st and I got Ron in the car and Sue in the car uh, along with my wife and we didn't anticipate the weather that we ran into. And so we really appreciate what the leadership here did in making sure the town was open to accompany those that were caught in that storm. So, and I am absolutely uh, elated that we didn't experience any deaths during that because with 50 degree uh, wind chill factors, we could have had that. But uh, with law enforcement and emergency management and the tools that were provided by the city of Wall and others, uh, we all survived. So thank you very much. Go. I think it's absolutely apparent that uh, the city of Wall stepped up, but not only citywide, but your community as well. And so we thank you. And you know, when I first got the report that the storm was coming and everything was going on, we had two commissioners that were on their way back. I did it go when I found out they were in, in Wall. I, I started to go find me to see if we could keep them here. <laughs> I didn't get no money, so I, I didn't come back. So thank you for all you did. And we're going to do a, a separate recognition for our staff. The deputy Cordell had the chief played a big part out here through the storm, and 
Randy says every time it starts to snow a little bit, she still gets a little bit jittery. <laughs> we had her doing all kinds of crazy stuff out there, and she made a big impact too. So I just wanted to take a minute to recognize her. But we'll have something more formal with our office staff because we have a lot of people that were involved in that. So I think maybe what we'll try to do is we're going to have to break it into some small groups and have you come up. Um, everybody is going to get the same award, so I'll just read to you what that is. Tonight, we're giving out uh, Pennington County Sheriff's Office certificates of commendation, and they're in recognition of aid rendered to law enforcement that assisted the Sheriff's Office in achieving its mission during the snowstorm of December of 2022. And I think we'll start with the city employees. Maybe we can kind of come up here up front and be able to do a little bit of a picture. Mark, you want to come help me hand some of these out? Um, and if we miss somebody through this, you let us know who they are. We'll make sure we're getting a certificate. And if they're here, they can come up and stand with us for the picture. But um, Mayor Mar Mary Williams, Carolyn Anderson, Mike Anderson, Lily Stone, and then Stan is Stan Anderson. Thank you. 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 Mike. He's He's nice. Nice. I'm here, but I'm not a city employee. That's fine. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Billy, come on up. Right here next to the, the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> He he stands. Stands. Stands up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're blocking me out now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got to yeah, come on in and get the picture. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have a couple of folks here from Pennington County Highway tonight Jeff Sorensen and Lance Preston. And Lance's family is here, too. You guys can come on up. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. really went above and beyond for us. We had units stuck all over the place. They they brought pieces of equipment out that probably shouldn't have been running the farm and were arresting his deputies and pulling things off the interstate and uh we count on them for a lot of things in Pennington County, and they always step up. And then I don't know, is Garrett here? Oh, that was Garrett. Oh, you're right there. I was told that you're going to uh, you're going to be uh, accepting the certificates for the Wall Volunteer Fire Department, the Wasta Volunteer Fire Department, Flint and Interior. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> Jerome says you're representing the whole Chicago. Right. 
And we definitely cannot do what we do day in and day out with all of our volunteer fire departments across the county. They, uh, they're a full force multiplier for sure. And I just can't think of a time we've ever asked them to help us out where they turned us down. So thank you very much. That is all I had tonight. So thank you very much for your time and for everything that you do for our citizens. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for, for coming. What a great treat. And especially to have three commissioners here. Thank you very, very much. So Absolutely. thank you, thank Brian. You. Thank and you. We'll get those other awards out. So you want to get me a list of who else was yes. involved? That would be outstanding. Okay, right. I'll do that. Thank you, Mary. Take thank care. you, Lance. Thank, thank you. you. Safe travels now. Thank you. And don't leave here next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that brings us back to, I believe, item eight. Uh, is there anyone that needs to uh, declare a conflict of interest this evening? <clears throat> okay, that moves us along to approving the consent agenda which is made up of the minutes, the claims from the city, the fire department, library and cemetery, as well as the budget report and the uh, on-call schedules, as well as vacation uh, for employees, the ambulance financials, the golf course, and the sales tax and BBP, uh, BBB report. With that being said, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Okay, Dan is moved. Second. And Rick has seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the underground construction uh, pay app. And that was sent out. And that particular uh, pay app covers the uh, last items of the uh, lift station, which we had waited for a long time to get the parts uh, for that. And it's um, also uh, covering the relief valve because there was an issue with that too after they uh, finally got that in and got the lift uh, station to work. And there is some dollars that are being held back from that because there is still some final cleanup from when they went in and fixed the um, leak. Is that the right word, Garrett? Yes. And uh, the seating that's got to uh, take place again because of uh, disturbing uh, more dirt when they did the force main repair. So with that being said, do I have a motion to approve the um, pay app, uh, app for uh, number four? That's the 74,100, right? Correct, that's right, yes. So moved. Okay, so Jerry has moved. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, Stan, Stan has seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, did we get Kelly on? That sounded like a Kelly. Okay. Thank you, Kelly, for joining us. Uh, okay, so motion carries. Now, because it's on Zoom, I only have to do a roll call vote if, or do I? You get a, get a, a negative. A okay, negative. very good. Or any different vote. If you get all no and one five, you know. Yeah, okay. Negative. All right, just wanted to make sure I was doing things appropriately. Okay, the next uh, change order uh, is from TDM. And this particular item involves no money. The only thing that it is affecting is the date because of the kind of weather we've had. Uh, the change date has been extended to um, May 15th, uh, just so that they can uh, get that project completed 
including um, because the water is in, the sewer is in, the road graveling and finishing. I mean, it really looks like a street now. I mean, it is amazing uh, what a great job they've done under some very difficult uh, conditions. And so uh, the time has been extended because they've got to still let all the snow melt, the mud kind of settle down so that they can go back in and do some of the topsoil work yet and the uh, seeding. So this does not involve any money with this change order. It's just the fact that it's changing, extending the date, and then they will bring back a, a, a final payment at the end of that uh, time period or when they complete it. So with that being said, do I have a motion to approve uh, the date change order? Move to approve. Rick's moved. Second. And Dan is seconded. Any further discussion or question? Okay, seeing none. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the motion carries. All right, so we moved the visitors. So now we're at public comment. Remember that uh, during this time, members of the public can discuss or express concerns, but you have a three minute limit. Is there anyone that would like to address uh, the council and public comments? Okay, seeing none, we have an agenda request. Lee, would you like to come to the podium? And because he's on the agenda, he does not have a time limit. Well, 24 hours might do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep it a little bit shorter, actually. I was hoping for a full council, so probably the, the next meeting will be up. Okay. You know, Lee, that, that would be good because our city attorney, uh, Stephanie Trask, will be here then. And it seemed like there were some concerns about tr transparency. Well, well, and I, well, that I'm going to talk about here tonight, the transparency side of it. But where I was going with that was the, I'm going to talk about the first half of what I had. The second half, I'm going to wait till the next time, just when hopefully everybody's here. But with the transparency, Lee, it, Lee? yeah, Kelly, can yeah. you speak up, please? Yeah, I'll, okay. Um, yeah, on the transparency, on the transparency side of things, what I was looking for was as these court proceedings go forward with gloves, not only in the sense of what is actually happening with the case going to the Supreme Court but the costs that are associated with it. We sit here and we talk about uh, TDM having a change order and it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a fee that was, you know, that they were asking for a change order, but if the engineers come before the council to explain what they're getting paid for. And I would ask that the attorney, if she's here every month, why doesn't she come to the city council meeting with her bill and explain to the city council so the residents of town know what we're being billed for? I think that's a reasonable expectation. I think that the $25,000 you guys have estimated this to cost the city to take this to the Supreme Court is probably <laughs> way under guessed as to what it's gonna cost. We've already been filing the appeal and the cost of the appeal and whatever that guy charged for that document. I mean, what are we in with already? 5,500, 7,500 bucks? I'm just guessing. I mean, it's it'd be nice to let the, let the people know what, we're paying for this as it goes. And I think that's a reasonable expectation we do with other vendors to the city. Okay, very and reasonable. Some, something to keep it up, up front and honest with the people. The other thing that I would question is the amount of conversation that happens in executive session. My question is, who is the city council? It's the, no, you guys represent the city council, but the city council is the people of the city. You guys represent the people of the city. The city is being sued, correct? Correct. The city of Wall is being sued. I think the people of Wall have a right to know a lot of the conversations that happen behind closed doors. I mean, I understand that employee issues 
those are private, but the conversations that the city has, I mean, what, what's being said behind those doors that the, that your constituents can't know? I think you need to use caution when you use executive session to have conversations. Okay. Can I? I didn't quite understand it all either. I actually contacted a different attorney because I felt like some of the stuff that I can't talk about was with city money, your money. And the other attorney that I, I'm bound, I can't talk. So that is, it's I guess the law is very, very, very disappointing to me. But and right now, some of the stuff we got is confidential. And that's, I realize there's some confidential stuff, but there's, I mean, how many of these conversations are confidential? Just that one that I'm aware of. Right. Just, the one document. Just the one document. And that's, and that's where I'm going with it. I mean, I understand employee issues are private, but the, the doings of the city, the, the ongoing underlying of the, of the city is, how much of that is confidential? Is it not the people you represent? Anyways, that's the, the what I've got. The second part of my my topic, I'll I'll have that conversation next week because it pertains to everybody, every city council member. So, and I'll try like hell to be here. Okay. Yeah, it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Okay. Uh, that brings us to item 15, Kinger. I'm going to be really brief. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to introduce uh, Katie Bruce, uh, who's our new uh, chamber director. She uh, started this week, so, you know, she has it all down and has it all <laughs> ready. I, I'm just actually trying to break her in for, uh, you know, city council, so we've got a couple things to uh, go over, but I just want to introduce her and have her give you a little bit of background of who she is. Thank you, Gordy. Good job. So like Gordy said, my name is Katie Bruce, and I'm a new chamber director. Um, I've been in the office now for four days, and I'm trying just to dive in head first and get acclimated as quickly as possible. So um, if anybody needs anything, please let me know, reach out. I will be happy to help you as much as I can. And then we do have um, some upcoming meetings. So we have our chamber meeting on March 8th at 7 a.m., and we have our month, monthly luncheon meeting at noon on March 14th at the Red Rock. And then we have our annual meeting on April 19th. And there are three spots opening on our board. And there are nomination petitions in the chamber office. So if anybody needs one, just stop in and grab one. And that's all I have for you tonight. So thank you. Can I'll be here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> When's the, uh, the chamber meeting? Um, it's March 8th at 7 a.m. So is that okay, that's, important. that's important to directors. Oh, the luncheon. I'm sorry. Uh, March 14th. And then will that be at the Red Rock? Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Yes, Katie. Okay. Great to have you in the office for sure. Okay, economic development. Don. I'm going to stand in for Callie again. She's sauntered off <laughs> away from us here. Um, but Wall Academy Development is continuing to do fundraising for to help out the Wall Ambulance Service. We started a friendly challenge, publicly asking local businesses to donate, and then continue the chain, challenging other local businesses to donate as well. We've raised as of last night five thousand thirty dollars through the GoFundMe page. And others have donated directly to the Wall Ambulance Fund that is set up at First Interstate Bank. It's kind of a fun little challenge that we got going. Um, our, we had an aging in place committee that had a roundtable discussion at Prairie Village to discuss senior care options, which would keep help keep seniors in Wall living in their homes where they are the happiest. 
Our panel of experts included individuals from Monument Health, Cornerstone Caregiving, SHINE, which stands for Senior Health Information and Insurance Education Program. They talk a lot about Medicare and stuff to help people out with those issues. And we're working with Monument Health to put together a place for seniors to go to get this information in a summary format, like a pamphlet type thing that we will be putting at the clinic. And at the next health fair, we're going, we've been asked to maybe put together another roundtable discussion about discussion about the same time as that health fair. We're continuing to work with the Black Hills Area Community Foundation to request $30 million from Congress to combat the housing crisis in the Black Hills area. We had submitted a letter of support along with you guys here several weeks ago. These funds will be used for qualifying area committees to establish their own housing trust funds. Senator Thune's office is taking the lead on this request and we'll know by mid-March what the appropriation rules will be for the upcoming fiscal year, which will determine if this request is allowable, but it'll affect the whole Black Hills region, including the wall. Uh, with the industrial park, KLJ is working on replatting lot one to accommodate for the lift station, and this will ensure that the city will be able to access the lift station and at any time that is needed. And we are still taking, having, uh, taking applications for the economic development director position. Have you received any? We've received two so far. Okay. All right. Thank you, Don. Did anyone have any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. All right. So the mayor's report today uh, or tonight is going to be relative to the uh, Echo Valley uh, loan application that we have been working on uh, through the housing infrastructure program with South Dakota Housing. So we're at the point. Um, that I sent out last night a, a summary sheet of what uh, this document uh, totally says. It's a 10 page document. So if anyone wants more information uh, or uh, wonders what the summary, the, the items I put on the summary, what they would refer to, you're free to look this over. Uh, the only document that we do not have yet, uh, KLJ is still working on the final plat for the 24 lots of phase one, and they will have that for us at the next meeting. And so my purpose of bringing this to you tonight is so that if you had any questions reg regarding the summary I gave you, we could uh, visit with you or try to answer them for you. Uh, at the next meeting, the application fee for closing will um, need to be addressed. And that would be, we've already sent in uh, our beginning uh, deposit, but we'll owe $10,269.38. Working with Chaz Olson and Beverly uh, I. Cotts, we have set a projected closing date for April 1st. And uh, I've indicated to them that the construction completion date would be September 1. The total amount uh, of the loan is $1,239,435. It's a interest rate that is stepped starting with a 1% over five years with a five-year balloon at the end. And the payments will be made according to the amortization schedule, which is in attachment two. Carolyn uh, recommended that we use an annual payment. The first payment will be due July 1st, 2024, and that amount will be $68,401. Echo Valley will also be contributing $100,000 when uh, we start construction. And um, the interest rate, our interest will not start until we draw our full our first monies. At this point, the city of Walls already put in $98,854 toward this uh, project. So uh, that is working toward the amount that, that we are obligated for in this 
loan. So with that being said, is there any uh, questions about uh, this loan application? You know, I, I like that on the, the loan, and Mary, correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like the last, they capped the interest rate at 4%. So the last two years, we paid 4%. I thought that was nice. Exactly. It is a low interest loan. And if you heard, uh, or if you follow the legislature, you know that on the very first day of legislature, they passed that $50 million, $150 million grant for housing or infrastructure that they didn't quite get all the way through last year like they intended to. So then I was... Uh, stressing because did we move too quickly on this and maybe we could have got grant dollars. But in conversation that I had Monday with both Chaz and Beverly, they indicated uh, there's they had it on their agenda to be discussed at their board meeting on Tuesday. They removed it from the agenda because they had some things that they didn't quite have worked out and they probably won't have the rules out until the 1st of June. Then they'll take applications for 30 or 60 days. So I indicated to them, we were gonna stick with the loan idea because we'll have this project completed before they ever even get to the point where they'll be able to get some dollars out. So mm -hmm. just if you've been following that and you were wondering that about that yourself, I wanted to uh, share that information with you. Does anyone have uh, any questions? Stan, do you, did you ha have any questions or thoughts after looking over the summary? Nope, I do not. It all looks, looks good to me. Okay, Kelly, did you have any questions? Uh, no, no. Okay. So as I said, we will be approving this document then for submission then at the next meeting, which is March 16th. And we will have need to approve the closing fee. And as Carolyn um, has on the agenda, we also need to submit this resolution 2302, which is uh, just a document that indicates that there's 24 lots, 15 of them are supposed uh, designated as affordable housing, that the total amount of the loan, what the interest rate is, and that we have, as we did last uh, month, put our reserved earmarked $500,000 to a CD as cash collateral for this project. So with that being said, I would ask for a motion to approve Resolution 2302. So moved. Okay, Stan has moved. Second. And Kelly has seconded. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor say aye. No. Aye. aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Ooh, I'll keep this in the right place. Okay. Truly, the South Dakota housing has been remarkable to work with, and, it, and we've been in many conversations with not only Chaz Olson, but Beverly and Scott Brown. So they've been very helpful on moving this over the goal. Okay, that moves us to item 20, finance officer report. Carolyn, do you have Actually, time? 20 is an agreement for that uh, grant. Oh, forgot, yes, skip that. Okay, 19, okay. Would you like to talk about that, Carolyn? Thank you. Well, as you know, we moved the um, project of 4th Avenue out a year um, <clears throat> for budget purposes and I think for the engineers to gather more information on getting that project moving forward. And so part of the requirement is to get a, an extension on this grant that we did receive. And so there's this document that needs to be signed and it's asked the letterhead or the front page asked for the mayor's signature and a copy of the minutes to reflect that. So I needed to have this in the 
uh, minutes to approve her signing for this grant extension, which we are out until April of 2025 to receive. I share the room document. Okay, so you've all seen the amendment agreement for the grant extension. Do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Rick's moved. Second. second. No, Jerry, be part. Okay, Jerry seconded. Any other further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mo motion carries. Are you falling asleep with the there, Jerry? No. Okay, so that uh, amendment then has been approved for the grant extension. Okay, what's the score on the game? The girls won. Sorry. <laughs> Seriously. Do you, do you have a number? 7464. I've been paying attention. Wow. <laughs> I it's like a one-point game. It was like Oh, back and forth. Yeah, I've just that. been stressing over that. Okay. If you so, can hear my phone vibrating, that's quite a yeah. scores. Okay, perfect. Well, good for the so, Eagles. So that means you're going to stay. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. And I also heard, were they doing something special at halftime for the football team down there? Did I get bad information on that? I think there was something because guess what? The super. Not Super Bowl, but um, the playoff rings Champions arrived. They did. Do you Where's yours? Show it to you? I was going to say, where Why is Why don't it? you have it on here, Rick? Okay, so while he, until he gets back, can you do the, your report then, Carolyn? Sure. Um, so March is always the month for doing the equalization meetings, and that will be on March 20th by state statute. We have to call a meeting whether we get appeals or not. The um, paperwork has to be filed in my office on the 16th in order to be addressed by the board on the 20th. Um, I did put publications out in the paper this week and next week they'll show up. Um, I just wanted to kind of get this in front of you so that you'd be prepared rather than waiting until the 16th to jump it on you <laughs> so you can kind of put it in your calendar. Um, I will know more on the 16th how many we have received. I would know all of them actually because they have to be received by four o'clock. And then I can give you a better idea of, and you can give me a better idea, how early you want to start that meeting on the 20th. Okay, so and who has to attend? I have to have a quorum, but you as the mayor and myself as a school board member does uh, count in that quorum. So who else would enjoy <laughs> equalization? I look forward to it. I think this year is really going to be fun. It's usually all the council that all the council comes. Oh, this isn't a volunteer thing. It's a <laughs> see you there. Yeah. Okay, well, perfect. You Stan might that. figure out yeah. if he chooses to have warmer weather than we're having at that time. No, nope. Stan, you got to come back. <laughs> Carolyn, of course, I know it's early, early on, but you might even it might even go two nights. We don't. I know. mean, it can. It can. That one year, I don't remember, was that in 21? We did it. three nights, one time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and wow. they were long nights. They long. weren't just, I mean, because usually. I know I received, uh, I received uh, mine via email the other day, and uh, the houses and stuff were up like 18 to 20%. Three nights. <laughs> okay. Well, that, yeah. All right. I'll give you some numbers next meeting on the 16th. So but wanted to get that onto your calendar. Um, I've been working on the annual report, keeping my fingers crossed that I can present that to you at the next meeting. I have till the first meeting in May, but I'd like to get that off my plate as soon as possible. So I've been working on that. And then um, I did send you or include in the email that I sent for the packet that I sent out to you asking those who wanted to attend 
the March 29th district meeting and I only got the response from the mayor. And so um, I as well would like to attend that meeting. And so um, we'll have to figure out the time frame of what um, we need or whatever to get to Hot Springs. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Oh my gosh. And they all got them in these boxes? Um, There was, was two different kinds of boxes. That one was like the dynasty and it has your name and everything on it. And the other one was just a little box and you open it up and it had like an LED light you can shine on it. But wow. they thought that one was neater and you just sure. set it on the shelf and pull it out of there. It comes out easy, but it's just like huge. Oh, I can wear this. Seriously. You don't so, wear these, do you? All, all the kids are wearing theirs. <laughs> Oh. When I got when I went in to get mine, Chris was that had his on. He's like, "Hey, Gary, how's it going, Gary?" <laughs> yeah, you register that as a weapon. <laughs> wow! So the engraving on the inside is that this your first one, or did everybody have that? The I, the big sexies is what we call the defensive line guys. Oh, I was a coach, so that's what we got all that on there. Then wow. there's hogs on the side, yeah. and that was the line, the offensive lineman. Anchors themselves, so yeah, it's kind of cool to remember all the little nicknames and memories too. That they, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. How do you get another on the top? What's that? You brush your teeth on top of the season. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get another one next year, though. Right? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so we're proud of those football boys, and we are proud of those girls. If they just work their way into the state tournament, that is incredible. Uh, and speaks highly of our sports program here, but we also have an incredible academic. So uh, kudos to the school. We're proud of them. Okay, so then public works uh, report then. I don't have much, just you know, we'll be doing all winter and I just had one item. I had a, a brush mower for the Bobcat on the budget. <laughs> And they don't think they'll be able to get it. So I'd like to move that money over to buy new tires for the loader. They're pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like skates on that thing. I yeah. The other day when I drove by it, a week out. So and then that's about all I have. And just so what do tires cost? Oh, <laughs> I don't want to know this. No. Okay. I think they're like in like a thousand a piece, maybe. And so how many do we need? Four. Oh, that's good. I can't remember enough. what we got last 18 time. 18 wheeler. Oh, gosh. Okay. Have, have you uh, heard anything on the boat of ours? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I don't know what to do. I don't know if we get our money back and try and find something somewhere else. Or, I mean, luckily, they're the ones we have still yeah. run. They're getting they're more is, is, more out. Is it? The order's still in? Yes. Maybe they'll come through. I, I mean, so. the supply chain has been slow. Yeah. So, Madison doesn't even like when I call him in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so I called him about the brush mower, <laughs> and he thought it was the lawnmower. But no, I'm keeping up on that. So, no problems with him switching that over to um, the load for tires is that okay is that okay with you stan yes okay all right anything else yeah i don't have thank you for moving all the snow that oh, you've no been problem. moving you guys have, that's turned into a pretty full-time job it sounds like it's supposed to maybe snow next yeah. Friday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> but we're running out of place the bad thing is is now it's warming up and everything's so muddy we can't Keep you telling to me move it or... field, but you got to mow that for me just for payback and it's going to grow. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Item 22. Is there any items for discussion? No action would be taken. Does anyone have anything? I have something. Today at uh, 4 p.m. in Walls Rug in the cafe, uh, an older gentleman that had some kind of walker fell down in the in the men's room cut his head his wife was 
trying to help him. He's from Rapid City, he likes to come down for his veterans donut. Our managers responded uh, really well. Uh, uh, Greg uh, Davis, Cecil Heave, the uh, Greg was uh, stuck right right with the lady. I, I called him uh, right before the council meeting. I, I was just curious about uh, the ambulance response time. The, the ambulance was there in five minutes, and I'll tell you, in a deal like that, an elder man, elderly man, and he, he must have been kind of big because I think it took four or five of our guys to help facilitate him out of the bathroom but but the ambulance was there in, in five minutes and i can't imagine what we do in that kind of situation without an ambulance anyway okay well hopefully that will all work out for that gentleman then his uh their their son uh works for Mon monument health in rapid city so okay anyway. probably got to cover them all right. Any other items for discussion? Okay. The next council meeting then would be uh, March 16th at 6.30. And we do need have a need for an executive session very briefly. Uh, so do I have a motion to go into executive session? I make a motion. We go into executive session for the purpose of discussing legal personnel issues according to SDCL 1-25-2. Okay, it's been moved. Is it a second? Okay, Dan has seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Council. Okay, I will call this out of executive session. Uh, item number 25 is other. Is there any other business that needs to come before the council tonight? Hearing and seeing none, I declare the meeting adjourned. Stan, that's 8.09. <laughs> <laughs>